scores of their own to make the final score Cheshire 28, Seymour 13. A loss, but a turning point. For Coach Paul Sponheimer, the second half performance was character building at its finest. The blue and gold built on the events of that balmy September Saturday afternoon. They ran off eight consecutive wins, finished second to Cheshire in the final year of the Housatonic League, and gained the berth in the state playoffs, their first since 1980. In that year, a young coach had assumed the coaching reins at Seymour High. His name, Paul Sponheimer. From Jestow Field on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University, it's Seymour against Bloomfield for the CIAC Class Double S Championship on Telemedia Sports Valley High School Football Game of the Week. Hello again, everyone. Ed Clements, Buddy Chernovitz on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University. We're at Jess Dow Field. Buddy, first let's talk a little bit about uh, the Bloomfield Warhawks. Two names that our viewers are, are, are going to see an awful lot of today. We're gonna, they're going to hear their names mentioned and they're going to see a lot of are Cortillus Woodson, a fine running back for the Warhawks, and a split end by the name of Dana Saunders. Now, in connection with these two players, they, they represent some of the athleticism on this Bloomfield team. Paul Sponheimer says that his team has to play a very... They'll go around the right side, they might end up going the other way, so his kids have got to stay at home on defense. Certainly going to have to do that. They're a very quick football team. They come into this game without four starters, and that may have a dip bearing on the game, but they certainly can run. They have a great deal of speed. They only have 19 players, so he... Awful lot on those seniors today. Now we're going to develop that story about the missing players for Bloomfield during the course of the game. Let's talk a little bit about the turf. We know Bloomfield has the, has the speed. We're, we have a light drizzle right now before the game. What effect does this turf have for Bloomfield? What does it mean with this great speed? Well, I think the turf is going to help Bloomfield because they're going to have pretty good footing regardless of the weather conditions. They're going to be able to run the football. That's part of their base offense, and I think for them this turf will help. Seymour, it will not make a great deal of difference. They're going to be able to play regardless of their game, but the turf will give everyone an equal opportunity, but with the speed, Bloomfield should have a little bit of an advantage. All right, now you mentioned Seymour. What can you say? What, what can we say about the Seymour offense? We have seen Chris Kelly engineer this uh, Seymour attack for three years, an awful lot of weapons for Seymour. They really do, and they're going to be tested a little bit today. The speed, they're going to have to adjust to, especially with their running game and the option game. But I think Seymour is going to come out and play the same football that got them here to this championship game, and they're going to come right at the Bloomfield Warhawks. I think Bloomfield is going to have to make some adjustments in the fact that they've lost four of their players, and they're going to feel their way a little bit in this game before we find out what really they can do. We'll be right back with the kickoff in the Class Double S state title game between Bloomfield and Seymour right after these messages. Specially priced diamonds and diamond jewelry. A.J. Klein Jewelers, Shelton. For supporting the child development center that helped Astoria overcome cerebral palsy. For funding the drug treatment program that helped Dan stay away from drugs and off the streets. And for helping the battered women's shelter that saved Julie's family and her life. They have just one thing they'd like to say to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. United Way, helping where help is needed most. Welcome back, everyone. And we're just moments away from the opening kickoff in this Class Double S CIAC title game. We're at Just Dow Field on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University. Seymour against Bloomfield. Bloomfield has won the opening coin toss, and they have elected to receive 
back deep for Bloomfield. In your picture a moment ago, that was Cortillas Woodson, and also back with him, Dana Saunders. The Wildcat kick short, though. And a loose ball on the play, and Seymour has recovered. I think Tottenham may get credit for the recovery, number 33 on that. Number 16, Larry Walton took the ball. You'll watch the kick go off, the ball will roll. Picked up by number 16, Walton picks it up and he is gonna get drilled. He loses the football right about the 40 and then I think it's gonna be number 33, maybe 84, who got the recovery, but it'll be at the 45 yard line. Anyway, the Caps take over at the 44-yard line of Bloomfield. We're just underway. Bloomfield has fumbled away the opening kickoff. And a loose ball, a snap from center between R.J. Ritchie and Kelly, and Kelly just falls on the football at the line of scrimmage. Let's look now at that uh, offensive alignment for the Seymour Wildcats. The same group that got that Seymour Wildcat into this football game are ready to go as Kelly second and 10. Wide formation for the Cats. I back formation, second and 10 from the Bloomfield 44. We're just underway from here at Southern Connecticut. On the option, the pitch out goes to Jake Ray and some good yardage on first down. Ola Franks from the secondary for Bloomfield on the tackle. We don't have the graphics on the defensive uh, alignment for Bloomfield. We were unable to get any information this week. Discussion at the far sidelines. Jacob Ray is, will be driven out of bounds very close to the first down marker. You see Kelly faking to his fullback Tottenham, then comes around the corner, does a pretty good job right here of reading and then making the pitch. Coming off is Franks. He will knock. You'll see Ray go out of bounds very close to that first down. But there is a penalty against Seymour, and it is going to move the football back. So the down will remain the same. It'll be second down for Seymour. As you see, head coach Paul Sponheimer completing his 14th year as the head coach at Seymour. And we'll mark it off right now. They'll repeat the down. I don't know how that could be a legal forward pass because that ball was certainly thrown behind and to Jacob Ray. It was not thrown parallel to the line of scrimmage. Tough call early against the Seymour Wildcats. They will be, and they lose the down also, so it'll be a third, as you can see there, about 12, 11 and a half to 12 yards for the first down. Line of scrimmage is the 46 yard line of Bloomfield on the artificial surface, a beautiful just downfield. Cloudy skies, umbrellas are up in the stands, a light rain falling at this time. Kelly back to throw on third down. Gets it out to Parker Savage, but he is met at the line of scrimmage by a host of Bloomfield uh, Warhawks led by Cortillus Woodson, the linebacker. Try to come with the screen this to the near side to Gary Parker Savage. Caught the football, but excellent pursuit by the Warhawks. You see Kelly just throwing the ball to the outside. Parker Savage comes up, and he is going to get hit as soon as he catches it. Edson got him number 10 first and then help from Woodson and company. It brings up a punting situation. And Brian Schultz will kick it away. He'll punt it away. Brian Schultz returning after missing the last two games of the regular season due to, in, to illness. And Schultz's kick is going to be downed inside the five-yard line. Great punt by Brian Schultz as he backs up the Warhawks to the two. But he had an opportunity to, to talk to second-year head coach Jack Cochran of Bloomfield and he discussed the fact uh, with the second year coach, uh, he asked the coach about the loss of the key players, of some key players from his team, and here's what Coach Cochran had to say. Uh, we're, we're real thin right now. I think we dressed about 19 players. One big injury to a two-way starter, and we lost two with the C rule we have at Bloomfield. We have a, an academic rule which says the students must have a 2.0 average uh, to be eligible to play. And uh, it's a good test. We'll see how they're going to rebound from the loss of the three starters. and. Uh, we're going to regroup. We've got a few extra players going both ways, but I, I, I think we're going to be all right. It's a big challenge for us. Welcome back, everyone. Buddy, no question about it. Uh, terrific amount of losses for this Bloomfield team with the inel ineligible players, the injuries, and down to a bare minimum on that team. 
And wait a minute, we have, uh, instead of a down football inside the five, we've got an awful lot of confusion on the field. So this will give Seymour a first down as Bloomfield had 12 people on the field on the punt. Seymour will pick up the first down as they'll be inside the 35 around the 33 yard line. Actually the 31, so that will give them a first down. They will hold on to the football and a big mistake by the Warhawks in this first quarter as they give Seymour back the football. You just do not do that to a team such as Seymour. First and 10 for the Cats, they're at the Bloomfield 31. First quarter action, Jess Dowfield, Telemedia Sports. On the option, Kelly gets it off to, uh, to Jacob Ray, and Kelly took a hit. Ron Edison coming up from the secondary to make the stop. Kelly has run this play all year. You see the guard, number 70, pull out in front of him, Klasinski, and then as he gets hit, Kelly pitches the football, but Edison comes up with an excellent tackle on Jacob Ray. Seymour on the football quickly on second down. They give to the tailback, and, and Jake Ray is met at the line of scrimmage. Ron Laboca, along with DeMont Kimball. Kimball... Laboca closed down that running play, the little bit of a wind back that Seymour's had great success with as Seymour comes back to that no huddle. G.R. Ritchie out over the football, they're ready to go. Good defensive series so far for the Warhawks. Sure is, they held one time and they thought they got the football and now they're gonna have to hold again. Third and long for Seymour, just inside the Bloomfield 30 yard line. Kelly over the middle, it is incomplete. He was going for his tight end, Clayton Sweet. Back on coverage, number 25, Garfield White. We've, we've seen Sweet come off the line of scrimmage free. This time Garfield White, number 25, stays with him, has pretty good coverage as the ball is away from the outstretched hands of Clayton Sweet, and it'll bring up a fourth down again, about nine for the Wildcats. They're going to go for it here on the 29-yard line. Wildcats show their spread offense. Out to the left, that's Parkasevich, fourth and long. Kelly back to throw. It is caught by Parker Savage, and if he's inbounds, that's a Seymour first down. It is Parker Savage on the reception inside the 20. Kelly will drop straight back. Parker Savage is bottom of your screen. Will just run an out pattern to the sidelines. Ball floats a little bit on Chris Kelly, but he delivers it. Gets the ball to Gary Parker Savage, a first down at about the 17 for Seymour. And that no huddle offense. Seymour is on the football and some movement on the line of scrimmage. And let's await the official's call. Looks like against Seymour, false start by one of the down linemen and it will start Seymour back at the 23 yard line. First and 15, another mistake in this football game. Both teams obviously feeling the pressure of being in a state championship game. Well, buddy, last time Bloomfield was in, was in this title game, that was uh, Back in 1982, that's been their lone appearance, and Seymour, previous to this year, has only been in the state playoffs two years, two games. So both teams were rather inexperienced for this state playoff. Jeff Tottenham with some good second effort before he's taken down by Woodson. When you look at the Bloomfield defense, you'll see a soft spot right where Tottenham is going to come. Jacob Ray is the lead blocker. Right there, number eight falls off of his block. That's Laboca. Grabs a, a leg on Tottenham, but Tottenham able to pick up another two before he's tackled. Second and long now for the Cats. Deep in Bluefield territory. That is Jacob Ray inside the five-yard line. Before he's taken down by Franks, it'll be a first and goal coming up for the Cats. Great call by Bobby Kello as you see the tackle number 74, Jason Tracy, number 70, Klasinski leading. Jacob Ray through that hole, Ray down inside the five at about the three yard line. Seymour spreads their offense. First and goal at the two. They give to Tottenham and Tottenham is in for the score. Fullback just comes straight over his right guard. Good blocking along the line of scrimmage by Richie Sympathy and, and Mullen and following or falling into the end zone number 23. Look at Richie get a piece of that nose guard and it frees up Tottenham to get in there for the first points of this football game. It'll be Schultz attempting the extra point. The hold 
It is blocked and no good. And Seymour will hold on to a six to nothing lead. We have 8.02 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Our score is Seymour six and Bloomfield nothing. Let's pause now for these messages. When you want the job done right, and done right the first time, take it to Mezios. When you need a quality custom paint job, take it to Mezios. For collision work, for frame and body fabrication, for motorcycle work, for pro street, for restoration and collision work on any vehicle, take it to Mezios. Because Mezios guarantees complete satisfaction. Mezios, the full service auto center that takes care of your total automotive needs. New Haven Road, Naugatuck. The Mayflower Room is a great catering hall located in River Plaza West Side Shopping Center in Ansonia. The Mayflower Room caters seven days a week and specializes in weddings, showers, stags, office functions, and repasses. Call the Mayflower Room, whether it's a party for 30 people or 130 people, whether it's a baby shower or a birthday, a christening or an anniversary. Come to the best in catering, the Mayflower Room. We're here to make your occasion the best it can be. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Seymour scores their first points of the game against Bloomfield. Schultz will kick it off. He kicks it off to Lamont, Lamont Kimball, rather. And Seymour is signaling that they have recovered a fumble. Apparently, though, Bloomfield held on to it, bud. I was going to say, the guy in the white hat is still giving the ball to Bloomfield. Watch Kimball as he comes up the middle. Again, a short kick by Seymour as he is hit. He goes down. And he is down before the ball pops out of there. It came out once he was tackled. Good call by the referee. And it will be the first offensive possession for the Bloomfield Warhawks starting at their own 40-yard line. And at uh, the officials board, by the way, Buddy, doing this uh, game, one of six games being played this weekend in the state of Connecticut, the board the, of officials is from the Fairfield board. And another temporary holdup in this game. Seymour got on the board first. It was Tottenham going in from uh, three yards out. We have an opportunity. Let's look now at that Seymour defense. It's a defense that has come on really strong at the end of the year. I think that really big effort for the Cats was in their next to the last game against Naugatuck High School. And we do not have the graphics offensively because we did not, were not able to get the information from the coaching staff at Bloomfield High School. First and 10 for Bloomfield at their 40. This will be their first play from scrimmage. They give to the big fullback, LaBoca. He's going nowhere. He stopped uh, dead in his tracks. Tracy, Jason Tracy, along with Weedle from the secondary. Tracy will just come right through the offensive guard's block, sets up, makes an excellent tackle on the fullback. Fullback's a pretty big kid. Ron Laboca, senior, 6'2", 235, and if he gets ahead of steam, he's going to be problems for Seymour and Tracy. Jason Tracy stopped him right at the line of scrimmage. You get a good look at the crowd here on the Seymour side. Player to watch is number four coming out of that split end position. Second and ten, they do pitch to Woodson. And Woodson sweeping wide to the left side. He does get out of con get outside contained, and he picks up um, good yardage on second down before he's rolled out of bounds by Parker Savage. One of the things that Coach Funheimer has stressed all week to his defense is that you must play the speed of this football team. Get a good example here. Coming to the outside, Woodson will dip his shoulder to the inside there and then go for the sidelines. He's able to get around number 34 there. Mike Weedle pick up about five yards on that play, and Seymour has to be aware of that team speed that the Bloomfield Warhawks possess. High back formation, it's a third and six. Bloomfield has it at their 45. We're still in the first quarter, just outfield. Bye-bye. Picked off, that is Maury. 30, 20, touchdown, Seymour. Joe Maury just stepped in front of that out and he goes down the far sideline, and you see there the celebration in the end zone with Seymour, their second touchdown here in this first quarter. Excellent read by Gerald Morey, the senior. Watch as he will just step in front of the intended receiver on the out pattern. Quarterback Walton throws it, and look at number 41 just come up. Make the catch. Jacob Ray is going to try and get in front of him, but Gerald Morey has a head of steam. The only guy with an opportunity is number 16, Larry Walton. Doesn't really do a great job in trying to get Morey, but Gerald Morey, the senior, 
with one that he won't forget, a touchdown run of approximately 50 yards. So the Cats will go for two on the extra points. They lead to 12 to nothing. We've got a half of this first quarter remaining. And it could be a long, long day for Bloomfield off what we have seen thus far. That one's going to go against the right guard as he moved or flinched just before the snap of the ball. And Seymour will be backed up now to the eight-yard line on this two-point conversion. And they're going to throw the tee out. They're going to go for one now rather than risk the opportunity of not getting any points on this extra point. And their kicking specialist, Brian Schultz, six foot, 165 pound senior. Remarkable buddy that he was able to get back into action because a few weeks ago we thought his season had been finished. Well, Seymour's lining up for the two. Kelly throws it out into the end zone for the two. It is batted down by number 10, Ron Edison. And so the try for the two points does not work, but Seymour still leads it 12 to nothing. Kelly underthrows this a little bit. His receiver is behind the defensive back. You'll see he breaks behind him. Great defensive play by number 10, Ron Edison, there for the Warhawks to prevent that two-point conversion. 6.28 left to go in this first quarter, and Seymour enjoying a 12-0 lead. But he caught up with uh, veteran coach Paul Sponheimer before the game, and he asked the Seymour coach about the strength, uh, the strengths of Bloomfield. Uh, their athleticism and their speed. They, they just have great speed. They looked fast in the mud against Weaver. Uh, they have great athletes, and they have exceptional high school speed, and uh, we have to uh, be very aware of that. We're back, everyone. Well, Paul Sponheimer, of course, buddy, was, was concerned about the athleticism and that speed of Bloomfield. But when you look up at the scoreboard, we see 628 remaining, and Seymour has a 12 to nothing lead. And unless Bloomfield can sustain something on offense, it could be an awful long day. That's LaBoca. LaBoca, the center of the field, up to the 35-yard line before he's taken down by Klasinski. And let's see what the Warhawks do with the football. And we've already gone into it with the coach, Jack Cochran. This club has really been decimated with the ineligible players. And, and really, they're just do not have the personnel that they had when they were playing really good football in the middle of the season. High back formation for the Warhawks at their 35. First quarter action, they give to Woodson, and he is stood up, but then he wants to go forward. Number 50, Gavitt getting to him first with sympathy. And sympathy popped him, but to Woodson's credit, he went forward. Woodson will go airborne right at the line of scrimmage. You'll see here he gets up and over right into Kevin Sympathy. Sympathy will lose a little bit of his tackle and allow him to pull ahead for a yard, but pretty good job defensively by Seymour as that middle linebacker, Kevin Sympathy, getting help from Jacob Ray. Second and about eight for the Warhawks. They need an offensive series here to keep, get some pressure off their defense. Second down, second and eight. That is Woodson. Trying to find his way up the middle. Picks up some good yards in second down. It's Mike Pucci along with Jake Ray on the tackle. Pretty good hole as you see number 75 just blocking down. That's Harriet and he creates a pretty good scene for the running back Cornelius Woodson. Very close to the first down for Bloomfield. Their running attack, pretty good running attack and they've got some speed in the backfield. Any one of their running backs could break it at any time and I know Seymour is concerned about that. That was Jeff Mullen along with uh, Ray on the last tackle. Third and short coming up for the Warhawks. They go to a power eye set and we've got some whistles blown on the field. That one's going to go against, I think, Bloomfield because the whistle blew before the snap of the ball and it will move Bloomfield back creating a third and about six, six and a half. As again, they are making some mistakes that are hurting their program. The fumble right off the bat, they created some penalties, the 12 men on the field, and then just a moment ago, the interception that has put them down here. An excellent crowd from Seymour supporting their Wildcats as they are huddled a little bit now as it is beginning to rain a little bit more steadily here at just outfield. We hope that the rain does not affect the football game. The field conditions should be pretty good with the artificial turf, though. Now a 
it's a third and seven for Bloomfield at the 38. They send White in motion. And a loose ball on the snap from center. And Seymour has the football. Jeff Mullen comes out of the pack and another mistake for the Warhawks. As Eddie said earlier, you cannot allow a good football team the opportunities that the Bloomfield Warcats or Warhawks are giving to Seymour. Another fumble. They are taking themselves right out of this game as they are shortening the field offensively for Seymour. See the ball just bouncing loose. Number 69, Mullen will come in right on top of that football at the 42-yard line. And Seymour will start again inside the Warhawk territory with their third possession. And they're at the 42-yard line. This is where the first quarter has been played. Play action. Kelly over the middle. Underneath. Incomplete. Sweet simply dropped the football. It was Saunders along with White on coverage for Bloomfield. Clayton Sweet is wide open. Kelly drops straight back into the pocket. Sets up very well. Will step up and then throw the ball right into the numbers. Number 22, Clayton Sweet just does not look it in, tries to turn the corner before he caught it, and it'll bring up a second down for Seymour. So second and 10 now for the Wildcats at the 41 yard line of Bloomfield. High back formation, spread formation. And they give to Tottenham, and he is tied up at the line of scrimmage. Mike Farragon and Ron Laboca combining on the tackle for Bloomfield. Woodson and Laboca, the two linebackers, get around back there. They're all over the field, and they do a pretty good job of reading and then with their speed getting to the tackles. That time, Laboca again stopping Tottenham. Third down. Kelly under a rush now, moves it outside, throws on the run. He throws it up for grabs. It is picked off by Ola Franks. So Seymour has turned the football over. Good pressure inside that time by number 88. DeMont Kimball. Watch now as the Kelly makes the fake and then rolls, trying to get away from the inside pressure. There's 88 Kimball, who puts good, good rush on, and then the ball thrown up. Franks makes the catch. Maury right on him to tackle him, but a turnover, and the Warhawks will start at their own 32-yard line. First and 10 now coming up for Bloomfield. So they have the football as a result of a Seymour turnover. 3.05 remaining, first quarter, just outfield on the artificial surface. And the pitch, that goes to Cortillus Woodson. And Woodson draws a crowd, and he might have picked up a first down. And he did outside to the 45-yard line of Bloomfield before he's taken down by Jake Ray and Tottenham. Number 50, Garrett leads around the corner. You see Laboca there also, but Woodson does an excellent job of getting to the outside following his block blockers and picking up a first down. That's the initial first down for the Warhawks in this football game as they're across at about the 44-yard line. And the Warhawks go to a split backfield now. And they have a first down out at the 44. That's the line of scrimmage. Woodson, they try him on the other side. He crosses the 45 to about the 46 before he's taken down by sympathy. And also getting up Jeff Mullen. And let's also credit Brian Schultz. Just an off-tackle power. Woodson looking for running room. He picks up about two yards on that one. Good job by that Seymour defense. As you see some of the umbrellas here at Just Dow Stadium as the rain is beginning to pick up in intensity. Buddy, that's one of the advantages of the, you hear an awful lot, pros and cons about artificial uh, surface, but when it rains, you do have a big, big advantage, especially when you're playing the first weekend of December. Timeout called by uh, the Bloomfield Warhawks. interesting first quarter. Bluefield's been able to move the football, but they have made so, so many mistakes that that has put them down to Seymour 12-0. The interception and then the 12 men on the field that gave Seymour the ball back. You know, buddy, when I, when I you gauge a program, of course, Bloomfield, uh, out of the Central Connecticut Conference West, uh, finished up with an 8-2 regular season record. You and I basically see, we're seeing football played in the southern port of the portion of the state. Uh, you, you try to gauge uh, the strength of a team by some of the opponents and who you think might be a, a, a tough football program. 
Simsbury is one of the top football programs of the state, and this Bloomfield team defeated Simsbury. And Simsbury will be playing in their championship game also. Coach Cochran has done an excellent job, as you see Coach Hunt right there, another one of the Valley coaches. And that's Delavolpe to his left there, and behind him, Bobby Lisi. Spooning there also, the entire Ansonia staff, and it's great to see, I know I already saw the Derby staff, the Valley, Coach Morazzi is here, the <laughs> Valley people are here supporting a team from the Valley, and Coach Sponheimer and company very greatly appreciate all the support that comes by way of the other teams that they played during the year. And a little strange to see Jack Hunt and his coaching staff in the stands on a, the first weekend of December. They usually are on the field. Inside handoff that goes to Laboca and Laboca getting up ahead of steam and he might have picked up another first down before he's taken down by Ray and as he gets into Seymour territory. Pretty good head of steam by number eight, Ron Laboca at 6'2", 235. He comes through. Arm tackles are not going to do it for Seymour as you see him break three arm tackles before Jacob Ray and company drag him to the turf. But again, it's a first down as they cross into Seymour territory at the 44-yard line. And the running attack is pretty successful so far for the Warhawks. So first down for Bluefield at the Seymour 44. They send White in motion. And they give to the tailback, that is number eight. Oh, Laboca was running out of the tailback spot. Stopped by Tottenham. Laboca, we, you've mentioned already, but a big young man there, 6'2", 235. And this is what the Warhawks needed, an excellent offensive series. And they have taken the football from their own 32, moved it across midfield. but. They're able to move the football with three and four yard gains with their running backs, and that's something that I know Coach Cochran was concerned about. They had to settle down, too, in the first appearance in many, many years. Under a rush is the quarterback, and he's going to be dragged down by Tracy. The quarterback, Larry Walton, was in trouble, and he went the wrong way. Back to his 40, checked at the 36-yard line. We just said they started the drive on their 32. They're right back to the 32 on this play. Larry Walton does not take a sack in this situation. He's got to get rid of the football. Excellent pursuit. You see Mullen and Tracy getting credit for a half a sack each, but it backs up the Warhawks to their own 36 on a third down situation. Not a good play by the senior quarterback, Larry Walton. How about a third and 29? The football marked at the 36 of Bloomfield. A deep drop. It's a screen. That's to Laboca. 40. And dragged down at the 42-yard line by a couple of the Cats, led by Tottenham and Parker Savage. Tottenham does a, an outstanding job of playing off the blocks of the screen as the first quarter will come to an end. But Tottenham just played off three blocks, prevented that from being a very big play. We played one quarter here as just downfield. We're at the on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University. Our first quarter score is Seymour 12, Bloomfield nothing. My ex-husband pulled out a gun, put a bullet in the chamber, put it to my head, and he pulled the trigger. I did a lot of hiding. You know, you smile on the outside, but inside I was very unhappy, very unhappy. The umbrella program helped me in many ways. First, and I think it's the foremost for me, is they helped me to bring my self-esteem back up. They also helped me get relocated, um, get a job, uh, make new friends. I give many thanks to the umbrella, many things, because a lot of people don't know of programs as such, but they're there, you know, and it's, it's just a matter of, I'm one person, I'm telling you, you know, there's help for you. Without Umbrella, I probably would be dead. I would probably be dead because I would have went back to the situation that I was in and um, God knows what would have happened. We're back, everyone, as we begin the second quarter here at Just Downfield. Bloomfield will have to kick it away. They're faced with a fourth and 23. Larry Walton has gotten pinned deep 
instead of uh, throwing the football away, he took the sack. And the punter, that is Saunders, the on the rush, kicks it straight up in the air. And how much positive yardage on the kick? The 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 ball rolls about five down. yards. They're going to get about a five-yard gain on the punt. Ball was bobbled, and then the kicker, watch the ball bounces back. Saunders will pick the football up, and as he goes to kick it, he will short leg it, gets it straight up in the air, and that's because of the pressure from Weedle. And then when the ball hits, it will give him about a five-yard net gain. Seymour will start at the 47-yard line. And that's where they mark it, the 47 of Bloomfield. The Cats enjoying some great field position. The fake inside on the option, that is Ray. 40, 35, and taken out of bounds by number 75, Paul Harriet. But Seymour now deep in Bloomfield territory. Great block by Clayton Sweet on the corner, number 22. He will knock down the cornerback, allowing the pitch to be made. As you see Ray getting the football, 25 was knocked down. That's White by the block of Sweet. Gets Ray down the field before he is pushed out of bounds by number 75. Paul Harriet. Line of scrimmage is the Bloomfield 27-yard line. I back formation for the Cats. Second back, that is Jake Ray, but he is met head-on. That was Woodson, Cortillus Woodson. Happens to be the leading tackler for the Warhawks, and he showed us why on that play. That's the same play that the Wildcats scored their running touchdown. As they come back on a counter, Jacob Ray comes back through, but right there, number seven, Cornelius Woodson read it very well, made the tackle. And they call him Coco. Kelly gets it out and completes it to Tottenham. He's upended by Franks. Kelly had all he can do to get the pass off. He was rushed by Mark Davis. Good pressure by number 55. Mark Davis forces Kelly to throw the football before he's really ready. But he does get it right into the hands of Jeff Tottenham. Tottenham down close to the 21-yard line. Third and short for the Wildcats. And the Cats in that hurry up offense. Tottenham is the fullback. Jake Ray behind him is the tailback. On the option to, to the short side of the field. Ray pinned out of bounds. First down for the Cats. They move the chains on the far side of the field. It was Woodson taking Ray out of bounds. And Seymour on the football. Early stages, second quarter, Telemedia Sports Valley High School football game of the week. The Class Double S state title game. Split backs for the Cats. Ray spins and unable to get out of the, out of the grasp of, let's get the number now, tw uh, 25, that is Garfield White from the secondary. You've got Mullen and Sympathy leading Jacob Ray through. The Warhawks do an excellent job of closing that down as you look from behind the formation. Brings up a second and about 12 for Seymour inside the 15-yard line. Seymour spreads it out. Parker Savage left. Maury right. Sweet sets up tight end to the left side on second and 12. On the option. The pitch, Ray, he is taken down after a short pickup. Garfield White again, closed the play off out from, uh, from the outside, 5'10", 180 pound junior. The fake goes to the fullback and then Jacob Ray will get out, make the block right there in 55, although Davis comes through and forces the pitch, but to Parkasevich, White comes up for the tackle. No gain on that one as the Warhawks do an excellent job of reading and containing that option play. Line of scrimmage is the 13. On third down, Kelly will air it out. Throws in to the end zone to park the Savage. Ruled out of bounds, or is it a completion? It might have been a completion inside the five. It's going to be a it catch is. as Gary, watch Gary park Savage as he will keep both feet in bounds as he right along the sidelines. It's a great throw. Now watch park Savage get his feet down. He'll look, make sure he's in bounds with a perfect, perfect catch. Great concentration, first and goal for Seymour. And great camera work by our crew. Tottenham, Seymour touchdown. Tottenham comes with the same play that they scored their first touchdown, right over the right side. He follows 
Richie Sympathy and Mullen into the end zone for the third score. About three yards, and Jeff Tottenham puts Seymour on the board. It is 18 to nothing early in this second quarter. Now let's see if the Cats will go for two. We've got nine minutes remaining here in the first half of play from just outfield. The umbrellas are up, but doesn't appear to be raining that hard at this time of the game. And Seymour will go for two points, having scored their third touchdown of the day. High back formation. They're going to send Parker Savage in motion. Play action. Kelly incomplete. He was going for Parker Savage, his fellow captain. Frank's covering for Bloomfield. So about the only thing Seymour has not done well here this afternoon is convert on the extra points. Teams come up field. Our score is Seymour 18 and Bloomfield nothing. Let's pause now for these messages. Welcome to Curtis Ryan Honda. It's good to see you again. We have placed our trust in Terry since 1985 for all our Honda purchases, all six of them. I have confidence in their service. They know me by name. It's a pleasure doing business here. Bob shows the same concern and sincerity today as he did for my father 10 years ago. That's stability. At Curtis Ryan Honda, we'll not only sell you a car, we'll also build a lasting relationship. Beans, beans, good for your heart. The more you eat beans, and lasagna, and potato salad, and beef stroganoff, look at the barbecue chicken, mocha cheesecake, and other good foods, in moderation, of course, that can be made so they're lower in saturated fat and cholesterol, the less likely you are to develop high blood cholesterol and heart disease. Well, what did you think I was going to say? Welcome back, everyone. Schultz will kick it off. He kicks it short, and that's wise when you have the, some of the speed burners that uh, Bloomfield has. It was fielded there uh, by the quarterback, Larry Walton, and he just touches his knee down at that point, and Bloomfield will take over at their 35-yard line. We're in the second quarter play from here at Just Dow Field. This is the Class Double S title game. Seymour leads it over Bloomfield by a score of 18 to nothing. And a new running back has checked into the backfield along with Laboka. Number 22, that is Chuck Bell. In motion, that is White on first down. And there's some movement on the right side of that Bloomfield line. And that's going to pin Bloomfield back five yards. Watch the top of your picture. You'll see the flinch by one of the offensive linemen right there, the right guard. Melvin Williams, and it will put a first and 15 on the board for the Bloomfield Warhawks. They cannot afford any more mistakes. The mistakes that they have committed have been turned into points by Seymour, and right now at 18 to nothing, they've got to do something positive on offense, really have to put some points on the board, or they may be in danger of really facing an awful afternoon here at the hands of the Wildcats. Split backs, and the pitch goes to... Bell, and Bell circling around now, back at his 10-yard line. He's going to be taken down at that point. First of all, the problem was created when Walton did not make a good pitch, and Bell really had really not too many options left. Ray on the tackle for the Cats, and now Bloomfield is pinned very deep in their own territory. As Eddie said, the pitch is away from Bell. He cannot get it. Does a good job of picking it back up. I thought he would continue to this near side right here but instead he tries to go back into what was the pursuit Jacob Ray pulls him to the turf he's down around the 10 yard line a first and a long way they've oh. got to get to the 45 fortunately fortunately buddy we have the use of that sc scoreboard here at Southern Connecticut S try second and 35 they give to Woodson for Tillis Woodson and finally wrestled out of bounds on the Seymour side of the field by Ray and Parker Savage we are seeing glimpses of the real speed, the elusiveness of the running backs on the draw play. Woodson comes through clean. He makes Maury miss here. Maury gets a piece of the jersey, but Parker Savage finally gets enough of 
Woodson to hold up before Jacob Bray gets him and drags him to the turf, but an excellent gain on a second and long. It's still third and long, but they picked up about half of the yardage necessary for the first down. Yes, third and 21. The line of scrimmage now is the 23. Blown field. Walton back on a deep drop. Sends it out. Up for grabs. It is incomplete and almost intercepted. Jacob Tracy laid a hit on to Larry Walton as he released the football. Ball will come up short because of Jason Tracy. Bang, before the ball is released, puts it up. He gets a good throw off, but really the last part of that is a wobble right into coverage. You see number 16, 34, Weedle and Schultz there on the coverage. Brings up a fourth down, and the Warhawks are going to have to punt again, and this has been an adventure for them also. Here's another one. High snap from center, and Saunders does get this punt off. At midfield, that's Parker Savage. He takes a couple of hits, and submarining him's number 71 was Manny Morales, along with Garfield White on the tackle for Bloomfield. You've got to admire the courage of Gary Parkasevich on that one, as there were three Warhawks coming down, barreling down on him. He chose not to make the fair catch. The punt drives the punter way back before number four is able to get the football off. That's Saunders, look at the coverage there, and then Parker Savage gets hit, and then at the end, he's going to get really drilled right there by number 71, but holds on to the football seam right at the 50, ready to go. Ball directly at midfield, play fake by Kelly, pumps once, throws for Parker Savage. It is intercepted. That's Woodson, court. Check that Dana Saunders. Number four, Dana Saunders. And Bloomfield takes over on the turnover. Buddy Saunders had four interceptions on the year, and two of, two of those interceptions, he ran back for scores. Seymour runs the down, out, and up. Kelly gets the football off, but watch this athletic move. Great concentration by Saunders as he gets up, makes the catch, and then able to get the ball back about three or four yards before Tottenham wraps him up. But an outstanding athletic move by Saunders. As you look along the line of scrimmage, the Warhawks back in possession of the football just across their own 25 at about the 27-yard line. And that's where they set up shot. First and 10, Warhawks, eye back formation. They pitch to Woodson. Woodson looking for the halfback option. Gets it out downfield. Incomplete. Woodson was going for Saunders, and Saunders was open. Parker Savage along with Weedle on the coverage for Seymour. Weedle had first coverage on that as he took him from the cornerback position straight down the field. Coming to the outside, Woodson throws the football. Very catchable ball, but Weedle just able to get his hand in there at the end. Saunders unable to concentrate enough to make the catch. It'll bring up a second down, but a good play by that Warhawk offense as they tried to come up with a big one trying to get the football to their outside receiver. Good job by Mike Weedle, the senior, in preventing that from being a completion. So second and 10 for Bloomfield after 27. We're in the second quarter of play. Seymour leads it 18 to nothing. Play fake. Walton eludes a tackle, throws it out. It is picked off. That's Weedle on the other end. 30, 25, 20. Weedle, touchdown, Seymour. Quarterback Larry Walton had his receiver wide open. He floated the football over his head and Mike Weedle, the man on the spot, will take the interception into the end zone. Good job by Walton avoiding Ray there, but the ball is really overthrown. Weedle back at the 39-yard line, gets it, picks up a convoy of blockers. You saw the yellow flag there. We'll wait to see what that is, but getting into the end zone. We're waiting to see what it was. It looks like it's going to be somewhat of... So it's going to be a clip, and it will bring the ball back, and that will erase a great run of 39 yards by Mike Weedle. And Seymour will have the football offensively somewhere around the 25-yard line, depending upon where they mark this off. So the Cats will have the football, but they take the score off the scoreboard. Instead of Seymour up by four touchdowns, they still lead it at 18 to nothing. A 
Once again, we tell our viewers that the board doing this game, there are six boards throughout the state of Connecticut. This is the Fairfield Board of Officials working this class double S title game at just outfield. So they'll start around the 42 yard line, right in between the 41 42. Seymour has been able to put points on the board here, and the Warhol defense has not been able to really stop Seymour in this first half. A handoff to Tottenham, and he is stopped by number 75, Paul Harriet, 6'3, 270 pound senior defensive end. So it'll be a second down coming up, second and nine, we'll call it. Football now marked at the 41 yard line of Bloomfield. Cats in control of the game as you see Parker Savage out wide to the right side, Maury to the top part of your picture. On the option, Kelly makes the nice read and takes it himself. The senior co-captain inside the 30 before he's wrestled down by Saunders. That Chris Kelly just reads this very well as you see number 50, Kevin Sympathy, right out in front of his quarterback, getting him down the field for excellent yardage down inside the 30 at about the 28-yard line. First and 10 for the Cats at the 29-yard line of Bloomfield. Split backs, Tottenham along with Ray. They give on that wind back play, that is Ray, and taking him down on a fine play is Coco Woodson. Woodson and LaBoca have been involved in almost every tackle from their linebacker position, and they are getting an awful lot of opportunities, an awful lot of opportunities as Seymour really is just picking up four and five yards every time they run the football. Second and nine for Seymour inside the Bloomfield 30-yard line. Play fake, Kelly. Complete. Tottenham, fine catch, fine one-handed catch before he's taken out by number two, Cortillus Woodson. Woodson along with Franks. Tottenham will come straight through. You see the fake, and then he just slides to the sideline, right into the flat. Kelly finds him. Excellent catch there. One hand pulls it in, picks up about seven yards. It's very close to the first down at the 20-yard line. Third and less than a yard inside the 20-yard line. Split backs. And Tottenham picks it up as he gets close to the 15-yard line. Saunders from the secondary on the tackle. It'll be a Seymour first down. Just again, the fullback straight ahead. Follows Richie Sympathy and Mullen on that side for the first down. They are inside the... 20 at the 15 yard line, first down for the Wildcats. Split backs for Seymour, under four minutes, under three and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Cats would like to add another score. On the option, that is Ray. Play is strung wide to the left side. It's going to go for a loss, a fine defensive effort by Bloomfield, and coming up from the secondary was White to make the play. That time on the fake. Tottenham was free as he came inside. Kelly pulled the football, got it outside to Jacob Ray, but as Eddie said, good contain by Garfield White and company. Brings up a second in about 14, 13 or 14 from the 17 of the Warhawks. Well, Kelly will air it out on second down, throws a bullet. Oh, there better be a flag on that one. Oh my goodness. No flag thus yes, far. It finally came. Finally came. Gary Parkasevich got Parker killed. Parkasevich was knocked down at the uh, goal line by Franks. Parkasevich was it Saunders? Parkasevich just ran a little bit of a curl pattern right on the hash mark at about the three yard line, and Franks just ran him over. The official had a little bit of a problem finding the flag. Finally got it out, but it will be a 15 yard mark off. Seymour will get the first down, and it'll be marked about the four or half the distance. Now let's see. This is a half the distance, so it may not be a first down on this one. Except, buddy, you that anytime, not. and that will the first down will come on the penalty. Though you're right, Edward. So it will be marked at about the looks like the 10 inside the 10 yard line for the Wildcats. So we'll be a first and goal coming up for Seymour. We've got a break in the action now, and a football spotted at the nine yard line. 
see the head football coach at Bloomfield, Coach Cochran, out there talking to the officials. He wants an explanation of that call, and the officials are giving it to him. He took a timeout to get that, so his football team will now defensively try and keep Seymour out of the end zone. They cannot afford to give up another score here in this first half. They are not going to be able to come back from a four-touchdown deficit as you look into that defensive huddle. We've got 2.45 remaining in the first half of play. It's been all Seymour. Eddie, I think the loss of his four football players has certainly made a difference in his team. It's very difficult at the end of the year to play with a group of kids and then to find out that four of your players are not going to participate in the final game. The C rule was the cause of this in Bloomfield, and those four young men, three of them because of the C rule, one because of an injury, but those men are certainly missed, and Coach Cochran talked about the seniors and their ability to get them into this game, and I know that it's really had to upset his football team to have to play without those four young men. No question about it, buddy, and the injured player is Cahill, Cahill Bell, and... Uh, He's a two-way player for them, both a, offensively and defensively. A key offensive and defensive player for Coach Jack Cochran's team, and, buddy, I, I think the... Uh, well. Let me make a point about Bloomfield, but before that, let's get back to some live action here. We have a first and goal for Seymour at the nine-yard line. They send Ray in motion. Kelly throws it, completes it. Touchdown, Ray. The fourth score of the afternoon for Seymour. And 2.40 remain, and Seymour leads it 24 to nothing. Ray comes in motion, then just comes back right over the middle. In the end zone, Chris Kelly finds him, covered by number four, Dana Sanders. But Jacob Ray for the fourth touchdown. Seymour on top here, 24 to nothing. Now they're going to go back for the one. And a flag is dropped on the extra point attempt. We haven't had an indication as to whether the, the kick was good. Now the indication from the PA announcer that the kick was wide to the right side. I think they'll mark this off on the ensuing kick. It's a 15-yarder as they are roughing the kicker, and Seymour will kick off from the 45-yard line, but the kick was wide, and if it's a dead ball foul, it should not be marked off. The penalty will be marked off on the kickoff. They should not get another opportunity. I'm going to be wrong, and I don't understand if it's a dead ball foul, how they could get another opportunity to punt the football or to go for the extra point. Would you like to explain that to me, Mr. Clemens, because you are very knowledgeable on the rules? They move it half the distance to the goal line. They and, did that. And they're going to go for two. Split backs. Seymour leads it 24 to nothing. There's a definitely definite dead ball foul, as Buddy indicated, roughing the, the kicker. Seymour, meanwhile, gets in for the two points in the person of Jeff Tottenham. And putting up two more points makes our score Seymour 26 in Bloomfield nothing. You get a ground level look at Chris Kelly handing the football off to Jeff Tottenham. He just steps behind the down block of his offensive tackle, Jeff Mullen, for the two point conversion. 26 to nothing here at Jez Dow Field. 2.40 left to go in this first half. It's been all Seymour, and I have a funny feeling that the rest of this football game is going to be all Seymour also. Buddy, just to complete a thought that I started a few moments ago before Seymour got in for their fourth touchdown, I think a, a, a big tip-off that, that Bloomfield was having troubles was the fact that they ended up their regular season against lowly Weaver. Weaver's not known for good football program, and they lost to Weaver. And uh, I think that was an indication. I don't know exactly when the el ineligibilities occurred for Bloomfield, but you had to think that they had some problems towards the end of the year. Seymour leads at 26 to nothing. We've got two minutes and 40 ticks remaining. And the rain seems to be picking up a little bit more in intensity. Schultz will kick it short. Walton let the ball go through his hands, and then he fell on the football at the 30. We've got a flag drop there. Might have been a late hit. 
in front of the Seymour bench. One of the Seymour players who's going to get a piling on. The ball was down. The ball was covered. And then the tackle took place after the ball was ruled dead. And it will be a 15-yarder. As the You'll see the kick take place right there. Number 16 is going to get on top of it. And then the hit comes from number 22 for Seymour. It will be a 15-yarder, and Seymour, their defense really done an, an excellent job here, but have not really been tested by this Warhawk football team as they will start the Warhawks at the 45. First down for Bloomfield in motion is White. Taps his quarterback. Quarterback pitches. That's number 22. And Weedle taking down Chuck Bell and... When Chuck Bell has come in, some bad things have happened, and really, not uh, not his doing. The pitch was not a good pitch again from the quarterback, Larry Walton, as he forces his running back, Chuck Bell, to stop and wait for the football. Wheel comes up, reads it very well, gets up from the outside. It'll be about a 15, about a 10-yard, 11-yard loss for the Warhawks. Their offense is going in the wrong direction here as we get very close to the end of this first quarter. Second and 21, and the football now back at their 34-yard line. So they had a personal foul against Seymour. They had created some good field position for themselves. So on a first down play, they lose 11. And this time they'll try trips to the left side. Why not? One back, and he is set deep in the backfield. That is Woodson. Let's see if the Warhawk, Warhawks put it up on second down. They know they give it to the lone back. That is Woodson. And he gets up to the 40-yard line outside the 40. Before he's taken down by middle linebacker Sympathy. Woodson comes on a little delayed draw as the quarterback Larry Walton gives him the football. Breaks clean at the line of scrimmage before he runs into the linebacking core of Sympathy and company along with Jello, but it'll bring up a third and about 16 for Bloomfield and they have to get that first down or risk giving the ball back to Seymour with enough time to score another touchdown here in this first half. Once again, bud, they go trips to the left side. They, they pitch this time to Woodson. He gets out of a tackle and fights his way across the 45 yard line before he's taken down by Gerald Morey. And he picks up some fine yardage on third down, but you're in trouble when you're faced with the second and 21. Just coming out of the backfield, Woodson just comes around the corner, gets down the sidelines before Gerald Morey drives him out of bounds. It'll be a fourth down, and they're going to go for it here. The Warhawks are taking the opportunity to try and convert. And Paul Sponheimer saw something he did not like, and he called for a timeout. Called out to his team to call the timeout. When we resume play here, we're going to have 46 ticks remaining. The clock is official here at Jess Dow Field. 46 ticks, I said, remaining. Fourth and seven will be coming up for the Warhawks. <laughs> Mr. Chernovitz, Jack Cochran, we know, is a young coach completing his second year. What do you talk, what do you say in, in, uh, at halftime to your team? I think you go in at halftime and you talk to your kids about getting to this point in the season, being 8-2, and two, and go out and just have some fun in the second half, really to play the way they're capable of playing because I know that they are not playing the way they've, to, to be 8-2. and two, You cannot make the mistakes that they made. They're probably very nervous. They need to go in, just think about what got them to this point and come out and just enjoy the second half, win or lose. And I think that's what, what Coach Cochran will take into halftime. You're down a lot of points, but you still have to score one touchdown at a time, and they need to have some fun here in this second half, and I think that's what they'll try and do. You know, that's a theme that's echoed by just about all the coaches that play in these playoffs each year. This is an extra game, and it really should be fun for the kids. Fourth down, fourth and long, and the quarterback, Walton, gets it out to Saunders, and Saunders has picked up the first down at the 41. We do have a flag, a late flag on the play. Parker Savage along with Weedle on coverage for Seymour. Eddie, there's only 12 teams playing, and this is one of the 12 football teams, so they've got to be one of the best 12 teams in the state of Connecticut. 
You see Walton drop back, throws the football right on the money to his outside receiver who catches it for the first down yardage, but a penalty is going to take this one or wipe this one away. You see number four, Dana Sanders, fighting for everything he can get, but this one will cost, again, Bloomfield the opportunity of a first down and holding on to that football, and they have just made too many very careless mistakes in this first half. And Seymour, as Eddie has said, is not going to let you get away with it. They're going to convert those mistakes into points, and they've done it. We've got less than a minute, 35 seconds left to go here. It's a fourth down, and the Warhawks are going to go for it again. And this time they have a fourth and 12 at their 43 as the clock is moving. Trips to the left side, single back. That's Woodson. He gets the pitch. And LaBoca trying to find some, uh, some, trying to block for his running back. Woodson reversed his field, but uh, unable to get past his 49-yard line, where Seymour, if they have some time left, will take over. Gerald Morey, along with Schultz on the tackle. One of the things that play did was it ran about 25 seconds off the clock. There were 35 when the play was started. Only nine left as the pitch is made to number seven, Cornelius Woodson, and he will run around trying to find an opening. Finally darts back, sympathy misses in there, and Maury and company wrap him up. Midfield, Seymour will take over the football with an opportunity for one, maybe two plays, depending upon that first, and then having an opportunity as that first half clock is run out. So we played one half of football here in the Class Double S title game, and our halftime score is Seymour 26 and Bloomfield nothing. We're going to be coming back with our halftime activities right after these messages. materials provided by a knowledgeable professional staff from the beginning of your project through completion. That's the Housatonic difference. Because disaster strikes someone every single day, there's always going to be one more night someone needs food, shelter, and a place to rest. Support the American Red Cross. Because without your help, one more night could be hard to come by. Welcome back, everyone. Because we have some technical problems, we will be unable to show any of the halftime festivities here at, at Southern Connecticut State University's Just Outfield. Buddy, let's talk a little bit about the first half. Eddie, I think it obviously is a Seymour-dominated first half. The mistakes by the Bloomfield football team have certainly been capitalized by Seymour, especially on offense. The first score came at 8.02 of the first quarter as a result of a penalty, a 12-man on the field penalty that allowed Seymour to keep the football. Jeff Tottenham went three yards. The conversion failed. At 6.28, less than two minutes later, Gerald Morey intercepted the ball at the 50-yard line, ran it in for the second Seymour touchdown. That was the end of the scoring in the first quarter as Seymour led 12 to nothing. Beginning the second quarter with nine minutes to go, Jeff Tottenham again went off the right side following Sympathy and Mullen into the end zone for the third score. Again, the conversion failed. And then with 2.40 left to go in this first half, Chris Kelly hit Jacob Bray in a 10-yard pass over the middle. The conversion was good for two points, and Seymour out in front in this game, 26 to nothing. And they certainly have not looked back since the first mistake in their first score by Jeff Tottenham. So I would, I would think uh, you, you've already told us what you think that Coach Jack Cochran should say to his team. If you're Paul Sponheimer, what do you say to your team? Don't get too overconfident. Come out and play the same way you did in the first half. You worked too hard to get to this point to allow a football team to get back in it. So the goal of Seymour is just going to come out and play the way they have in the first half. Really, since the third game of the season, they've just played outstanding. And I think of any team in the state, they have gotten better week after week. Kelly, I think, should be the All-State quarterback. He is the best that I've seen. He deserves the opportunity to lead an All-State team. And with that football team, Coach Sponheimer is just going to 
create that deep, give that defense an opportunity to play and allow that offense just to do what they've done well for the last eight weeks. And, buddy, with those words, we'll say that we'll be back with our second half kickoff right after these messages. For the newest look in fashion jewelry, get a pair of unique ear pins available at Thomas Jewelers. Whether it's clipped on or worn as a pierced earring, the ear pin curves to the contour of the ear, creating a look of sleek sophistication and offering an elegant twist in fine jewelry. Come see Thomas Jewelers' stunning collection of ear pins in a variety of designs set with diamonds and other precious stones, starting at only $75 a pair. Ear pins only at Thomas Jewelers, Main Street in Ansonia. As a teacher, I've seen lots of children and noticed when they had eye problems. But with Katie, she never gave any indication that she couldn't see very well. And they held a vision screening, and she didn't pass the screen. I was very surprised to find that she had a lazy eye. With a patch and glasses, she'll soon have 20-20 vision. Children don't know how well they should see. Call Prevent Blindness for more information and programs in your area. Things worked out really well for Katie. She's doing great in school, and we're really thankful. Welcome back, everyone. So we're moments away from the second half kickoff here. This is the class double S title game between Seymour and Bloomfield at Jestow Field. We're on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University. In your picture, that is Gary Parkasevich settling back. He'll be one of the deep backs. Bloomfield will kick it off to begin the second half. Seymour leads it 26 to nothing. It's been all Seymour in the first half. Bloomfield making many, many mistakes, and Seymour themselves have turned over the football a couple. Seymour themselves have turned over the football a couple of times. As the kickoff is short, and the field's going to become slick. That is Gerald Morey getting the football to midfield before he's taken down by number 10, Ron Edison. So Seymour will get the football, an excellent field position to boot at midfield to begin the second half. Ball bounces around, Maury picks it up at the 25, cuts to the near side and gets the ball to midfield. An excellent run back on that kickoff and gives Seymour great field position to start this second half. And to the top part of your picture, that is Maury along with Parker Savage. Tight end to sweep to the right side, first and 10 for the Cats. Working out of the eye formation, that is Jake Ray to the 45. He's taken down by Cortillas Woodson along with defensive tackle Mark Davis. Just coming over the right side. They follow the blocking of Sympathy and Mullen. Tottenham leads it. Jacob Ray picks up five for the Wildcats. You wonder, buddy, if Seymour will go straight at Bloomfield in, in the second half. Field's got to be slick. And Jeff Mullen anticipates the count. That's going to go back five yards for Seymour. 69 comes out of his stance. He's stepping down to block. Unfortunately, he beat the snap count by one full count. As you see, the fans now huddled under the umbrellas. Looks like Karen Baker there in the middle of some of those Seymour supporters. Had two sons who played at Seymour. She's here supporting the Wildcats as they are enjoying a 26 to nothing lead as we begin this second half. And you saw the smiles on their face. They don't mind the rain. That is Jake Ray being taken down by Davis, the defensive tackle, and up from the secondary, Ron Edison. Seymour is one and one in these state playoff games and looking for their second win in state playoff action. Jacob Ray follows his watch of Tracy and Klasinski to the left side. The Warhawks close it off as you look at offensive coordinator Bobby Keller, who has done a magnificent job this year, along with Coach Sponheimer there, and creating an offense that has given an awful lot of defenses some problems in this season or during this season. Third down now for the Cats on the option. Along the line of scrimmage, Kelly. Pitches to Ray. The ball squirts out of Ray's hands. It goes forward and out of bounds. It'll be Seymour's football. And it looks to be a Seymour first down. It is. Cortillus Woodson was defending for Bloomfield. As Kelly will release this football, he does a great job of coming to the outside and then picking a spot. Just as he is going to get hit, he will pitch the football off to Jacob Bray. As Kelly gets hit, he comes up limping a little bit. You see the ball 
Ball out of the hands of Jacob Bray ahead for an extra five yards. Seymour at the 27, ready to go. First down for the Cats. The straight handoff to the tailback Ray, met by Ron Laboca, the inside linebacker. Pretty good size along the front with Kimball, Davis, Walton, Harriet. Good size lineman for that Bloomfield football team, and the linebackers have done a pretty good job all afternoon, but Seymour has just been a little bit better in their ability to hold on to their blocks and to get yardage on that ground. Second down play action. Kelly throws it out and completes it to Maury. Saunders on the tackle, but Seymour inside the 15. Maury goes right down the hash in the seam. Kelly throws the ball right into the numbers. Outstanding throw catch by Chris Kelly to Gerald Morey as they are down inside the 15-yard line. The Wildcats as they begin this second half looking to put some more points on the board. Ball at the 14 of Bloomfield. Seymour looking to take it in for the fifth score. Flags are dropped before we get the play off. For this time of the year, there have been a lot of mental mistakes on both sides of the football. This time again, Seymour with a false start. They'll be backed up five yards to the 20-yard line. But both teams with a lot of mental errors, considering this is the 11th game, you would think that they had passed that vibe. But maybe it's the intensity and the fact that it is a CIC championship game. Ball now placed at the 19. It's a first and 15. And running with the football is Ray before he's taken down by Edison in the secondary. Tottenham goes to the left and then coming behind him, Jacob Bray. He breaks through and gets down close to the 10-yard line before he is tackled by Bloomfield. But Seymour second and about seven at the 10. Second down for the Cats, split backs. They try Tottenham and the senior fullback gets a pair off the left side. Clock is running in the third quarter. Seymour has taken that third quarter kickoff, second half kickoff. And as you look at Paul Sponheimer, looking on at the action here at Southern Connecticut's Jess Field. In the background, you see the scoreboard. Third and five. Kelly, play fake, throw, touchdown, Maury. Nice catch by Maury. Made a fine catch in this drive. Gerald Maury with the slant pattern from his split end position just comes to the inside of the field. Kelly with the fake to Tottenham and then throws the strike right at the goal line to Gerald Maury. Covered by Franks, but not close enough to keep Gerald Maury out of the end zone. His second touchdown, one on offense and one the 50-yard interception for that second score. And Schultz converts on the extra point. And Seymour leads it 33 to nothing. Parkisevich with the hold. Brian Schultz head down, ball right up and through the center of the uprights. Seymour enjoying a 33 to nothing lead. We have a break in the action and let's pause now for these messages. Bo's Nose. Bo's Nose, great food. Like prime rib, seven days a week. Fried seafood. Pasta. Surf or turf. Homemade recipes from a family tradition. Bose knows how to show you a good time. Pull up to the pub for daily drink specials. Order from the appetizer and sandwich menu anytime. Bose knows now it's time for you to know about Bo's Restaurant and Pub. Pershing Drive, Derby. Daycare. Youth program. Homeless shelter. Family counseling. Rehabilitation. Disaster. This year, like every year, a lot of people and nonprofit programs in our community are counting on our support. Community development. Daycare. Rehabilitation program. Services. Because when you give through United Way, this is where your money goes. Helping people who really need help right here in our community. Your local United Way. 
helping where help is needed most. We're back, everyone. Schultz's kick squibbed and handled by Lamont Kimbo. Uh, De check that Demont Kimball and sympathy on the tackle of Demont. And Bloomfield will put the football in play at their 29-yard line as uh, Bloomfield gets uh, their first possession in the second half. Seymour leads it 33 to nothing. Wildcats going in for their fifth score, taking the second half kickoff, methodically moving the football down the field, and it was Kelly converting on the touchdown pass to Gerald Morey. As Seymour has spread the scoring as they have done all year long. Among many, many offensive weapons for Coach Paul Sponheimer's team. Paul Sponheimer completing his 14th year as the head football coach. And Paul, back in 1980, that was his first year, happened to make the state playoffs. They played uh, Daniel Hand High School, and they defeated Hand High School. So Paul Sponheimer looking like he's going to go 2-0 and in state playoff games. But he might also be a proper time to mention, you know, as we have a player down on the far side of the field, on the Bloomfield side, and they're administering to him now, might be a proper time, but also to, to mention that with this game, Seymour is no longer the conclusion. There is no more Housatonic League. This game ends it? I don't know if this... I think yeah, we... You're, we talked about that all year, and Seymour will now enter into the Naugatuck Valley League, and they will play next year in that NVL. The Housatonic League now has been divided up with the district the ACC and a couple of other teams from the shoreline that now will make up what is going to be called a mega conference, a number of different divisions within that mega conference. So next year, if Telemedia chooses to show the football, high school Valley football, we may have some new opponents to look at in the course of our 10 game or 11 game schedule. Of course, in our coverage area, Derby, Shelton, and Amity, they have gone to the mega conference. Seymour has joined Naugatuck and Ansonia in the NVL. With our break in the action, let's go to our third quarter feature, Playbook. The reverse is a great misdirection play for the offense. The first movement of the quarterback causes the defense to react in one direction. The ball is then handed back in the opposite direction to a back. The ball carrier is moving away from the defensive pursuit. He picks up blockers and heads for the end zone. The reverse can catch the defense overreacting and produce a big play. We're back, everyone. And after our, our break, injured player is up. We hope well. First and ten for Bloomfield at their 29. Handoff to the fullback, Laboca, and Sympathy, along with Schultz on the tackle for Seymour. Laboca picks up some good yardage on first down. We talked about this young man all day as Laboca comes through the line of scrimmage. Sympathy, finally, along with Brian Schultz, drag him down, but he picks up six yards on that first down carry. And it is getting a little bit wet out there in the stands. So second down coming up for Bloomfield. Second and four outside their 35. Play fake inside to the fullback. And running the football is the quarterback, Walton. And he's taken down by Tottenham. And depending upon the spot, Walton's going to be close to that first down. Walton runs the reverse pivot, fakes to his fullback, and then just tucks the ball away to try and pick up that first down yardage. You see, first to get him was Jeff Mullen before he got help from Tottenham and company. They're going to bring the yard markers out, as you see there, to measure. It's very close to that first down for Bloomfield. Their offense has not really challenged this afternoon. And Seymour has just been able to, both offensively, as you see there, just a short 
less than the length of the football for the first down, but Seymour has just offensively and defensively controlled this game. And you have to think, Bud, that this rain certainly does, does not help the speed factor involved with the Bloomfield, would soften up the field. With the artificial field, though, I really don't think that'll make much of a difference. It's going to affect the throwing game more than it will affect the running game, the ability to hold the football, quarterback's ability to grip it, but it should not affect the running. Even on quick cuts, this field is excellent, and it would take an awful lot of water to really change the footing of both teams. Third and short for Bloomfield. At their 39, they've got about a foot to go for the first down, and the quarterback takes it straight ahead, and he should have picked it up on that play. Looks like his forward progress is netted a first down. It is for Bloomfield, and this is their first possession of the second half. Seymour leads it 33 to nothing. Our Telemedia High School Football Game of the Week, this Class Double S state title game. In the football game at wide receiver is Tervon Walton. He's at the bottom of your screen in front of the Seymour bench. First down for Bloomfield. Walton pitches out. That's Garfield White. He's pinned deep. He'll be taken down for a big loss. Schultz along with Maury combining on the Seymour tackle. That play had no chance of success right from the beginning. You'll see this reverse as they try and come and then pitch back. Waiting for it here is, I think, Brian Schultz, but Schultz is all over it. Doesn't make the tackle, then he'll get up and finally help out. But Seymour just defense that play very well. That was Brian Schultz. He was in the backfield. That play will lose another 10 yards for Bloomfield and their offense when they get a couple of positives end up with some tricky play that has lost a lot of yards for them. Try second and 22 and they give to Woodson. He breaks it at the 40. Midfield, the 40 yard line, the 30, the 20 and tripped up. A touchdown saving tackle by Gary Parker Savage. Woodson has some afterburners. He broke free at the line of scrimmage. Then it was a foot race with Gary Parker Savage and Cornelius Woodson. Woodson comes free, and then he comes to what the near nice side. What a nice move there. Yeah, great move on Moray, and then Parkasevich will dive right at about the 25, gets the feet of Cornelius Woodson. Woodson will fall down at about the 19, but something that we have said all along, the Bloomfield football team has speed. Cornelius Woodson showed you that speed that time, but Gary Parkasevich equal to the challenge. So the football now down at the 19 of Seymour. Bloomfield hasn't seen this all game long. Walton throws it out. It is picked off at the one yard line by Weedle. So Bloomfield could not stand prosperity. Walton threw it up for grabs and Mike Weedle pulled it down on the interception. Ball was not very well thrown by quarterback Larry Walton, but give Mike Weedle credit. He is right on the coverage all over the intended receiver and makes the interception. That was Garfield White that Larry Walton was throwing to and Seymour will take over at the one yard line. So Weedle with his second interception of this football game and Seymour stops another drive by the Bloomfield Warhawks. So the Cats take over at their one. And Kelly, as a smart quarterback would do, tries to wedge out some yardage. He gets three on the play. Laboka and Farragon, the nose guard, on the stop for Bloomfield. And I think we can safely say that Chris Kelly is one of the most intelligent quarterbacks in the state of Connecticut. Top flight student. And this is a very sophisticated Seymour offense. And Chris Kelly has been with this offense for three years and certainly has grown over the three years in running it. They give to the fullback, that is Tottenham, and he gets another three yards on the play. And time is being knocked off that clock. We're under four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Garfield White on the tackle for Bloomfield. 
Mullen blocks down along with sympathy. The end just turns out. Clayton Sweet opening up the seam for Jeff Tottenham as he comes through, picks up about four and a half to five yards. It'll bring up a third down. Close to five as you look at the scoreboard. 3-16-15 left to go in this third quarter. It's all Seymour and pretty much a Seymour football victory. Kelly, play action oh. all alone. The tight end that is sweet to the 25-yard line. Taken down by Larry Walton, the quarterback who's now in the secondary for Bloomfield. Clayton Sweet is wide open at the 15-yard line. Kelly gets him the ball, number 16 there on the tackle for the Warhawks, but a first down as Chris Kelly just finds Clayton Sweet wide open at the 15. High back formation, so the Cats have created the field position they want out to the 25-yard line. Parker Savage out wide to the right, second back. Ray hemmed and brought down for a loss. Laboka, first to get to him. Got to give a lot of credit to that Seymour staff, offensive staff, and especially upstairs to Eric DeMarco. He is up top talking to Bobby Kello, and between he and Bobby, they have found some openings in the Warhawk defense, and they have been able to exploit those openings for obviously the 33 points, but that play there to Clayton Sweet was an excellent selection as he was wide open for the first down. Second and 12 from the 22. Play action. Kelly throws it out. All alone is Sweet. And he rambles for another first down before he's taken down by Woodson along with Edison. I think that was Jeff Tottenham who caught the football. He slides out of the backfield. The fake, and he will slide into the flat. That's number 33, and he does a great job of getting close to the, across the 40-yard line for the Wildcats as the ball rests almost on the 40. Seymour has just offensively not been stopped by the Warhawk defense. First down for the Cats. Ray, straight handoff off the left side, taken down by Laboka. Seymour... Apparently, Buddy's going to run off some clock here. This is their second possession of the second half. Ray follows his guard, Sympathy and Tackle Mullen, through there. As you see head coach Steve Cochran there talking to the officials. Very tough when you come into this championship game and your kids do not perform as well as you feel they can. And obviously, it's taken a little bit of a toll on the Bloomfield football team as you come in here, one of the best teams in the state, and certainly you want to play well, but Seymour has just taken the game away from the Warhawks here this afternoon. Kelly throws it downfield. It is up for grabs, almost picked off. The pass was intended for Brian Schultz. Now in it wide out for Seymour. Kelly gets pressure, but still stays in the pocket. Throws the ball into coverage. White goes up with it along with Schultz. Ball is tipped behind it. Clayton Sweet, but good defensive play that time by Bloomfield as Seymour now with a third and about nine from their own 41-yard line is the only thing that is in doubt this afternoon is the final score of this one as it's been all Wildcat football. Third down, Kelly swings it out on a, on a screen pass that is Tottenham, Tottenham. 45, midfield, 45, 40, and finally taken out of bounds, uh, down inside the 30-yard line by Tervon Walton. Nice run by the fullback Jeff Tottenham after he caught the pass. Kelly sits back in the pocket, then he will drop, throws off the screen pass to Tottenham. Tottenham at the 35, breaks the tackle there. Good block by Mullen. Breaks another tackle, and then number one comes in to make that saving tackle. That's Trevon Walton, but a first down for Seymour as they are across the 30 at about the 27-yard line. And that windback play, that is Ray, unable to get away from Woodson. 
That should bring the third quarter to an end. Seymour with their second drive trying to score have really controlled this third quarter of football as they have the entire first half. Demont Kimball also in on that last play for Bloomfield. We've played three quarters here at Just Dow Field on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University and our third quarter score is Seymour 33, Bloomfield nothing. It's a little bit mental and that sort of reminds me of the old Polish saying, life is hard and then you die. I have to take it a day at a time, and sometimes that's hard, so I have to take it a minute at a time. The main way, way Valley Mental Health has helped me is that it's work rehabilitation program. The work rehabilitation program is very important because you don't really feel a member of society unless you're working in some capacity. I'm in the residential program, okay? Um, I live in my own apartment. I pay my rent directly to my landlord, and I take care of all my bills myself. I've been very lucky. I've been getting very excellent medical and work rehabilitation help. The best part of my rehabilitation is I can live alone. I'm working out in the competitive world, and it's taught me that I am an important person just like everyone else. Welcome back, everyone. As we begin the fourth and final quarter of play here, Seymour on another drive, already leading 33 to nothing. Kelly on the option to Ray, and Ray down the far sidelines inside the 10-yard line. We gotta bring this one back. They're gonna call it an illegal forward pass again, and I, the ball was thrown forward, but. Kelly never crossed the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can pick it up. Now, the ball's going to be on the 28-yard line. Kelly steps back. He pitches the ball ahead. He's four yards from the line of scrimmage. Look at that. He's not even close to the line of scrimmage. That's illegal. That. that is That's something legal you in this do. game. Correct. That's the second time he's been penalized by that play. And they're going to bring it back, call it an illegal forward pass. Unfortunately for Chris Kelly, he did the right thing. The official just has no angle on that, and it's a terrible call. Okay, I'm going to be wrong. I'm going to call it a clip. This is going to be a clip. But. So I went all the way down the lane on that one. At least it was right. Chris Kelly did throw that ball correctly. Even though it was forward, it was behind the line. So it would be called a forward pass. But the clip is going to bring the ball back close to the 38-yard line. So Chernovitz, keep quiet. Second and 25. I was right on that one, though. Gerald Morey to the bottom of your screen. Split backs for the Cats. Second and 20 at the Bloomfield 38-yard line as we just enter the fourth quarter of play. Kelly under a rush. He's going to be dragged down for the loss. It was DeMont Kimball getting to the senior quarterback. Kimball comes from the down tackle position. You see him second man in there, beats the block, and then goes right through to... Quarterback Chris Kelly for the sack, so it will bring up third and a lot for the Seymour offense. Good job on the sack by DeMont Kimball. He's only a sophomore, 6'1", 200-pounder. Pretty good quickness at that down tackle position. We have had an awful lot of situations, third and 23 and second and 25. Kelly under a big rush on the screen. That's Ray, and Ray is taken down on the far side of the field. First to get to him is Woodson, the 6'1", 185-pound senior linebacker, and along with Woodson helped by Ola Franks. Strong rush, as Eddie said, but the screen pass just dropping it off. Sweet picks up pretty good yardage, but it will bring up a fourth down here. Seymour right at the 33-yard line, and they're going to be fourth in about 15 yards. They're going to go for it as they line up again with the slot to this near side. Trips to the left side on fourth and 13. Kelly flings it out for Ray and almost with the interception and six points was number 25 Garfield White. He's being consoled by number one Tervon Walton. Ray comes Slides to the flat. You see him at the top here. Just slides out into the flat. 
And right there, almost the pick, and as Eddie said, it would have been a clear run to the end zone. Warhawks unable to hold on to it, but they will get the football unless the penalty is against the Warhawks here. As there is a flag down in the middle of this. They are talking to the Warhawks. I imagine Seymour did something wrong, and penalty should be declined. Bloomfield should take over, but we'll wait and see here. Seymour made two boo-boos on that one, and the Warhawks will take over at the 33-yard line. So the Warhawks, Bloomfield takes over. They take over on downs. Line of scrimmage is the 33-yard line into the fourth quarter of play. Very little doubt about the outcome. Has been, there has been very little doubt for a long time of the outcome of this game. Seymour leads it 33 to nothing. And Bloomfield would like to create something positive so they can take some positive memories out of this state playoff game. High back formation. Walton on a deep drop, sets up a screen to the left side to Woodson. 50, midfield, Woodson still on his feet, out of a tackle. 40, 30, down the far sidelines, 20, and inside the 10-yard line. If he didn't go out of bounds, a fine play for the Bloomfield Warhawks before Woodson is taken down by Weedle. This young man can run the football as we watch... The screen pass set up. Woodson just drops off. You see him come at the top of your picture, just sits and waits. Walton gets in the football at the 30, and now he will run through some tackles and around some people. Parker Savage misses him. Maury right here wraps, but unable to pull him down as Woodson pulls free and then just goes down that far sideline. Schultz misses him there. Tottenham blocked out of the way. Weedle finally knocks him out inside the 10-yard line. About a 60-yard jaunt on that for Cornelius Woodson. And the ball down to the Seymour 12. And they give this time to a new running back in there, number 22, that is Chuck Bell. He's taken down after a short pickup by Jeff Mullen. That's the first time Bell went straight ahead. We've seen him try and get that pitch and go to the corner. This time he goes straight ahead for a couple. No pitch out this time as Bell follows the blocking of Harriet and Garrett for about two. They're inside the 10-yard line looking to get a touchdown in this fourth quarter. High back formation. Bloomfield knocking on the door. Back to throw as Walton lost it into the end zone. It's up for grabs. It is... Incomplete, out of the end zone. A flag, though, is dropped in the end zone. Number one, the intended receiver was Tervon Walton. Now let's await wake the, wake the call. It's going to be face guarding on number 41, Gerald Morey. They're going to call him for pass interference, and they're going to say that he was not playing the football and he was face guarding the intended receiver. It's a fade route as the quarterback just steps back, Walton and throws it to the corner. See Maury there going up. That's a tough call because he really did not have his hands, nor was he in contact with the intended receiver. But they're going to step off that half the distance, create a first down and goal for Bloomfield. And Gerald Maury will be penalized for face guarding. And we mark it at the five-yard line. First and goal for Bloomfield as they go power eye set. Quarterback is Walton. They give to Woodson. Woodson straight up the middle into the end zone for a Bluefield touchdown. Nice to see that number seven, Cornelius Woodson, is able to finish off the drive with the touchdown. His 60-yard screen run put them down there, and then Woodson just comes straight ahead, and he weaves and bobs his way into the end zone on a nice five-yard run. A couple of the Bloomfield supporters on that far side is they're going to get that flag around the field, but maybe a little, not enough, and a little too late for Bloomfield to get back into this one. But nice to see Cornelius Woodson, the senior, 6'1", 185 pounder, get into the end zone as they're going to try it for the two-point conversion. Power eye set. 
Walton gives to Bell. Bell sweeps it wide to the left side. Ray does not let him get outside. Is that Ray or is that Sweet? I think that's Sweet, 22. Clayton Sweet making the defensive play, cutting off uh, Bell as he attempted to get go wide to the left side. So they try for the extra two points, no good. And as the teams come up field, our score is Seymour 33, Bloomfield 6. Let's break now for these messages. Why do people shop Allen's Plumbing? It's the quality. Quality supplies from the best manufacturers. Products you can trust. It's the great selection. Allen's has the area's largest selection of plumbing supplies. It's the low prices. Low prices because we buy in large quantities. Quality. Selection. Low prices. Allen's Plumbing. More than just plumbing. A family tradition. Janine woke up in a cold sweat. She remembered that she'd gone to a party the night before and gotten smashed out of her mind. The question is, who was this guy in her bathroom? What did he look like? What had they done? How had she gotten herself into this mess? What about Eve's? Then, much to her relief, Janine realized that unlike the rest of us, she was just a cartoon. Get high, get stupid, get AIDS. Welcome back, everyone. So Bloomfield has scored the first time here this afternoon at Jess Dow Field. And an onside kick is covered. The expected onside kick is covered at the 48-yard line. And covering was Mr. Schultz. Brian, six foot, 165 pound senior, and a remarkable, a remarkable athlete for Seymour. The, just the fact that he's back here in this title game. Seymour has what is called the hands team. That are the players with outstanding hands. Brian Schultz right up there, makes the recovery, right at midfield. Seymour is ready to go. They have scored in both possessions of the second half as they take their third possession here in this second half. First down for the Cats at the 49 after covering the onside. Jake Ray trying to swing it wide and taken out of bounds. Ron Edison, Garfield White, Larry Walton all in on the play defensively. They strung the play out well. High stand corrected. Seymour did not score on both possessions. One, they lost it on down. So they begin as they are backed up or begin at the 50. Picked up about a yard on that play as Jacob Bray came to the near side, tried to get outside. Was finally driven out of bounds. Wildcats with that spread offense. The pitch to Ray. Ray pinned out of bounds. No place to go. Walton along with Woodson. Kelly reads this very well as he makes the pitch just as he's going to get hit by number one, Trevon Walton. Gets the ball outside to Jacob Bray, and then Ray steps out of bounds close to the first down. But again, there's a penalty as you see the Seymour football team's got the rain gear out. Penalty, and it will be against Seymour, so this will negate the run by Jacob Bray. All year long, we've seen Kelly on that option, but he really at the last moment before he pitches to Ray, last possible moment, you were a former quarterback and he takes that pop. Didn't like that idea of being hit by those other people. I got rid of it pretty quick, but Kelly has done that well all year. And again, the ability of number 70, Klasinski, and number 50, Kevin Sympathy, to get out in front of him really creates a problem for the defense. They're still discussing that penalty. And that option that Seymour runs is an outstanding option play, and they've been able to make it work for them all year. So it's going to be a holding penalty against Seymour, and it will back them up to the 44-yard line. And the Seymour Wildcats call a timeout. You know, Bud, we, we really should once again mention that offensive line for Seymour. Uh, they have done the job all year long. Center is R.J. Ritchie. Center, the uh, guards, Mike Klasinski, along with Kevin Sympathy. The tackles, Jason Tracy and Jeff Mullen. And the tight end, uh, Clayton Sweet. It's been an outstanding offensive line. Klasinski is only a junior, along with Sympathy. They will both be back next year. Clayton Sweet, a junior, 
also, but Jeff Mullen they will certainly miss along with R.J. Ritchie and Jason Tracy. Those three young men have had an excellent career for Seymour along that line of scrimmage. As you look into the center of the offensive huddle, Bobby Keller with the headset, Paul Sponheimer there, also in the picture, Frank Warrecki, the offensive staff for the Seymour Wildcats, and bottom of your picture, the defensive coordinator there, Robbie Wells. So most of the staff is really feeling very comfortable right now, enjoying their 33-6 to lead, and they really would just like to run this clock out and take this championship back to Seymour. As we resume play, it's a second and 15 for the Cats at their 43. Kelly pumps once, throws it out, has a Parkasevich out there. Gary Parkasevich turns around, makes the catch 20, 15, spins away, and finally taken down at the seven yard line. Gary Parkasevich, his final game for the Seymour Wildcats. White making the tackle. What a great play by Parkasevich, first to make the catch. Down, out, and up, as you see Parker Savage start at the bottom of your picture. Watch the fake by Chris Kelly there, and then Parker Savage turns it up. The defender falls down, but Parker Savage makes a great catch and then gets around him there. Number 10, that's Edson on defense, but Gary Parker Savage brings the ball down close to the five-yard line for Seymour as they are first and goal. All marked at the six. Second back, that is Jake Ray heading towards the end zone. The ball is uh, fumbled, but the play is going to be ruled dead as Ray was down at the one foot line, or let's call it the about the two foot line. Tracy Kozinski opened the hole. Ray tries to reach into the end zone. The ball is knocked out as he hits the turf. Gerald Morey was there to recover it, so Seymour would have had the touchdown, but they rule it down at the one-foot line. Chris Kelly sending Jacob Ray to the right. They're ready to get another one right here. It was Larry Walton taking the hit from Ray as he met Ray head-on. So second and goal. Let's see who the Cats give for that touchdown. Jake Ray. Jacob Ray, his second touchdown of the football game so Tottenham has two Morey has two and Jacob Ray with his second just a half yard as you look right along the line of scrimmage straight ahead right through Jacob Ray for the six points and Seymour capping off and make a magnificent season for them second week of the season they lost to Cheshire and after that unbeaten Eight games to wrap up the regular season as Schultz converts on the extra point. And in the state title game, on their way to a victory over Bloomfield. As the teams come up field, Seymour leads it now 40 to 6. Parkasevich puts the ball down again. Brian Schultz head down, ball right up through the center of the uprights for the extra point. Just a remarkable story, as we said, Bud. Uh, an awful lot of hard work and determination for Seymour. And uh, one of the state's finest. And they're proving it here this afternoon at Just Outfield. A couple of the spectators on the far side as they, obviously, Bloomfield supporters, but they have not really had an awful lot to cheer about. And Eddie, I take you back about two weeks. I think the best game would have been a repeat of... Cheshire, Seymour. I would like to see Seymour play Cheshire at this time of the year. I think they've just gotten better every week of the season. and They certainly have put together an outstanding year, but a great game today as they enjoy a 40-6 to lead. Well, the game plan for Seymour has been to kick the football on the ground, and they've executed that beautifully. Garfield White returns it to the 40-yard line, keeping the football as much as possible out of the two deep backs. Ray, along with Sympathy on the tackle on the kickoff, and Bloomfield has the football with 7.21 remaining in this uh, fourth quarter of action, our Class SS title game. Game has long been decided. Only question now is the final score. This may offer an opportunity for Seymour to play a lot of their young people and to give them an opportunity to play in a state title game also.
trips out to the left side for Bloomfield on first down. And Woodson to midfield to the 45 to 40 and taken down inside the 40 by Weedle. Cortillus Woodson. Weedle has made a couple of touchdown saving tackles. Again, Woodson finds an opening and then goes to the far side before number 34, the senior Mike Weedle just takes him down and he makes an aggressive tackle. He has not let that guy get outside of him to beat him for the touchdown. As you look at the Seymour cheerleaders, they are getting ready to put on their ring gear also as it has been a steady drizzle here since the middle of the first quarter. First down for Bloomfield down at the 36 of Seymour. Seymour leads it 40 to six. And they pitch to Woodson the short side of the field, and he dances his way for five, six, seven, eight, count them, close to another first down before Maury and John Duke take the uh, senior running back down. Woodson comes on a pitch to the top of your picture. See number 50 there, Maury Garrett leading him around the corner, and then once he gets around the corner, Woodson just pulls ahead for the extra five yards in that what looks to be close to a first down. It is a first down for Bloomfield. Buddy, let's uh, credit Jack uh, Cochran from, from Bloomfield, the head football coach, with a great decision that he made after the fourth game of their season. Uh, Mr. Woodson was a tight end, and they converted him from tight end to running back, where he has picked up since that move 10 touchdowns. And the first down carry... Sympathy along with Tottenham. Six minutes remaining in this football game at Gestile Field, campus of Southern Connecticut State University. And second and short coming up for Bloomfield on another drive, second and three. Inside the Seymour 20. Single back. And pinned down for a loss back at the 19-yard line is Woodson, Parker Savage, and Ray combining on the takedown. Parker Savage comes up from his cornerback position to close this one down along with Jacob Ray. You see number 83, Gary Parker Savage, turning the runner back in to allow his pursuit to catch up with him and no gain on that play actually a loss of a couple for Bloomfield as they will be third in about 13 again trying to get their second score of the game football marked at the 19 yard line quarterback Walton throws over the middle a wide open receiver that was Tervon Tervon Walton goes incomplete Walton was open as he comes over the middle. Quarterback Walton just unable to deliver the football to him as he is open there. Parker Savage drills him right about the three yard line. Weedle behind on coverage, but bring up a fourth down here. And as I have been wrong most of the day here, instead of 14, it's a fourth and four for Bloomfield. And they need to convert here as we are winding down here in this one. About 4.53 left to go as you look at the offensive center, Eli Hunt over the football. High back formation. Walton will pitch to who else? Woodson. Woodson is going to try to outrun them to the outside. He picks up the first down and down the left sidelines. Touchdown, Bloomfield. Cortillus Woodson. Young man has great speed as he goes to the corner, gets the first down, and then tight ropes the sidelines into the end zone. But his second scorer of the game little bit of a pitch gets outside Jacob Ray there as Ray is cracked down by number 25 great block by Garfield White frees the runner Woodson to get to the corner and then down the sidelines for the touchdown so give Garfield White some credit on that as he cracks back on Jacob Ray allowing Woodson to get to the corner and into the end zone so Bloomfield undoubtedly would go for the two points it is Seymour 40 and uh, Bloomfield 12 with 444 remaining in the contest. Walton throws incomplete. Had a receiver there deep in the end zone. 
And Eddie, I think we have to give some credit here to the Bloomfield Warhawks as they have not given up. They've been down by a lot of points in this one and still keep coming. They have not stopped playing football and it's a credit to their program and to their second year coach, Steve Cochran, who has kept his kids into this one. And I think what we said at halftime where he was going to tell his kids just to come out and have some fun, that's what they're doing. They're just enjoying the afternoon and the fact that they have gotten to this game, they're going to try and show what got them into this position. So Woodson with his second touchdown, an excellent run, and the Bloomfield football team put 12 points on the board. Unfortunately, Seymour with a 40-point score has really dominated this game and been able to do really anything that they wanted to do, both on offense and defense. DeLon Kimball was the intended receiver on the extra two points for Bloomfield. So with 444 remaining in this football game, this Class S title, our score is Seymour 40 and Bloomfield 12. Kicking off will be Tervon Walton. And you got to think again they're going to go onside as they get most of their players on the left side of the football. The kick is made and a scramble at the 50-yard line. First of all, you got to have that football go 10 yards on the free kick. And I'll let the officials unscramble things there on the field. Might not have gone the necessary. Touched it before it went the necessary 10 yards, but that was an excellent try as the ball watches the ball will roll close to the 50-yard line and the Bloomfield people are waiting for it to cross midfield. Someone must have touched it just before it got there. But that ball really, right about there, it's touched by Bloomfield and then it crosses the 50. Bloomfield does come up with it, but they touched it before it went the necessary 10 yards and Seymour will take over right at that spot. So the Cats have it at the 48-yard line of Bloomfield and no doubt we'll just look to run out the clock here at just outfield. Take home a sweet victory in this class double S title game and go on the year to 10 and one. Jake Ray on the pitch out from Kelly. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Ron Laboca. And buddy, you mentioned a couple of moments ago, this Bloomfield team has been fighting throughout this football game. They're playing with an awful lot of intensity. They really have. And Again, Laboca and his counterpart, Woodson at linebackers, have been involved in a lot of tackles. You see number eight there, Laboca, with good pursuit, gets over, makes the tackle. It'll be a second down. A lot of mistakes for Bloomfield in this football game, and really giving up the big play has hurt them and allowed Seymour to get the points that they have. Second and nine, the football marked at the 46. Kelly gives to the fullback, Tottenham, and he stopped after one down to the 45-yard line. And let's see who made the tackle there. 25, White coming in from the secondary. Tottenham comes out of the eye-back position, or excuse me, Ray out of the eye-back position, or it was Tottenham, sorry. And White there on the tackle as you look at what has to be some very happy Seymour football players. Buddy, before I do forget, uh, let me give thanks to our spotter, freshman, on the freshman football team with an injury. Otherwise, he would have been dressed in on the sidelines. Sam Gianpaolo, who has done a super job of spotting here, uh, spotting for us in the press box at Gestau Field. Tottenham on the carry, the nose guard, Farragon on the tackle as we wind the clock down here at Gestau Field. It'll be a fourth down coming up. The football just inside the Bloomfield 40-yard line. Gerald Morey will go to the top part of your picture. And the give is to the fullback. Jeff Tottenham. He picks up or looks to be the looks to be enough yardage for the first down. Davis on the tackle. It is a Seymour first down. Tottenham comes over the left guard, actually collides with number 70, Klasinski, but picks up that first down yardage, allows Seymour to continue their drive. And again, as Eddie said, they're just really running the clock out. They have won this football game and taken the double S title back to Seymour. 
So first down as Seymour goes double tight end. Schultz along with uh, Sweet. The tight ends, and I, I detected a little movement on the left side of that Seymour line. If my eyes do not fail me, that's going to go against Seymour. False start, either number 74, Jason Tracy, or Klasinski there, the just, garden. It's, just, a, it's just that movement. Jason Tracy, enough to draw number 88 into the backfield. Kimball and Seymour will be backed up five. Right now, doesn't really matter to Seymour. As they're just going to run it off, bring this game to a conclusion. We'll repeat the down. It'll be first and 15. The line of scrimmage now is the Bloomfield 42. Seymour keeps it basic. Double tight formation. Maury is the lone whiteout to the top part of your picture. We will be making our presentation of our Blanchett's player of the game at the conclusion of the game. And the lights in this afternoon contest have been on for a long, long time now. And that is another reason why these games are played at, uh, at sites with lights in December. Uh, I wish that it was heated up here. We really don't enjoy the heat and the comfort that we should, but it's comfortable and it's not wet up here also. First and 15 at the 42. Second back goes to Ray. Ray spins out of a tackle and he gets close to the 35 yard line. Knocked down by number 16, Larry Walton. Larry Walton from about the uh, mid part of the first half as we get a look at Ray again. Just winds his way through for a couple of yards. Straight ahead plays by Seymour as they are interested in just ending this game and trying to hold on to the football as we wind it down here in the fourth quarter. Very well in the scene, double duty as the quarterback and in that secondary, Chris Kelly. Maybe that's his final carry on the option. Davis on the tackle. It'll be another Wildcat first down. What a pleasure it's been to watch that young man for the last three years. Kelly comes to the near side on the option, fakes the Tottenham, and then will turn it up. Picks up excellent yardage. Another first down as he crosses the 30 to 25 and is dragged out of bounds right around the 25-yard line for the Wildcats. And Seymour is going to substitute their entire offensive unit. That young man has enjoyed just an outstanding career. Started with a knee injury back in his sophomore year and just has just grown in the position, not only as a quarterback, but a leader, as Eddie has talked about, and has led his football team to the Class Double S State Championship. And Seymour will take a delay of game penalty. I do not believe that that's going to upset the Seymour coaching staff. They're trying to get 11 players in there, and the new quarterback, Bud, will be the freshman 5'9", 134-pounder pound, Eric Tracy, younger brother, Jason. And a misconnection there. The ball is loose on the turf. Bluefield is signaling that they have the football. Let's wait the officials uh, I call. I think they're going to give it to Seymour. They're not going to allow this game to go any longer as the officials are just want Seymour to run this one out. This one comes right up and through Tracy. He never really has it as it just bounces away. Looks as if the Bloomfield Warhawks came up with it, but the official is giving it right back to Seymour in there saying, hey, run a couple plays. So Seymour now will, they're having trouble getting in and out of the huddle here with a lot of new faces in that offensive group. Fullback is uh, Wayne Lightham. Tracy is just going to sit on that football as we are 37 seconds away from this one being over. Jason Tracy just takes the snap and goes straight ahead. 
They'll bring up a third down for Seymour, and they really only have to snap the ball one more time here, and this one will be over. And someone has taken a time out to extend the length of this one. And we're, really, buddy, we have seen, we've had some steady rain uh, about halfway through that, uh, I'd say about the second quarter on, we've had a, a steady rain here at Just Dow, and really this turf, this artificial surface, really does take this rain well. We haven't really seen that slipping and sliding, although I gotta think it's it's uh, slick in spots. So you, there's the Seymour sidelines. A lot of hugging going on down there. Is and the Raven. John Commune, that great uh, prognosticator, might have caught a picture, an uh, in-here picture, might have caught John Raven Commune. You start out at the spring practice and you set some goals for your football team, the players try and set some goals, and obviously in the back of your mind is always being here in the state championship game, and then the opportunity of winning it is the culmination of anyone's career, and the Seymour Wildcats certainly have been able to do that this year and with a 10 and one record by one of the best football teams in the state of Connecticut. If Cheshire ends up being number one, Seymour's got to be right behind them. They lost their only game to Cheshire and certainly deserve to be one of the top either second or third teams in the state of Connecticut. Wayne Lightham had taken the handoff. Uh oh, here it comes. Oh, the coach got drilled. Obligatory. Two, not one, but two water jugs. And you see the smile, and you see the support Jason Tracy there along with the others. And that's got to be a great feeling for Coach Paul Sponheimer, his second state championship. We're going to get this one on replay. Watch this one come. It's a little chilly here. We'll get the replay back as he took double barrel on that one. Fourth down, fourth and 14. They're going to give to the tailback. Let's see if we, if we can pick up his number. Who was in it? Watch now. Let's see if we can get the culprits there. It's Jacob Ray and Clayton Sweet. And you leave it to the backs because they are right on target. Absolute perfect. No question about it. That was Sean Karpiuk. Uh, who carried for Seymour on the fourth down. Ball goes over on downs to Bloomfield. There are 19 seconds remaining in this football game. The clock is now running down. Seymour will win it. We've known that for some time. 10 and one on the season as Cortillus Woodson does his magic. And he's taken out of bounds on the far side of the field by Eric Tracy. And the time is run down here at Jess Dow Field on the campus of Southern Connecticut State University. Our final score here, Seymour 40, Bloomfield 12. We're gonna be coming back with our presentation of our Blanchett's Player of the Game right after these words. Host a YFU student, and you can join thousands of American families as part of Youth for Understanding International Exchange. Us here has broadened our perspective in life as well as other people's. He's made so many friends in high school. He's accepted the kids, and the kids have accepted him. Volunteer okay. now to be part of the world of YFU. Call 1-800-RU-READY. Asier is just a loving, easygoing, caring person, and we love him just as if he was our own. Blanchette Sporting Goods in Shelton. We don't just know sports, we live it. Well, buddy, uh, Seymour has concluded their most successful season in I don't know how many years. The Cats end up with a 10-1 record. Uh, they end up with the Class S title over Bloomfield High School and our Blanchette's player of the game, if we can hear ourselves above the crowd, outstanding defensive uh, player for the Seymour Wildcats, Mike Weedle, number 34. 
Mike, first of all, the presentation to the plaque. Great game and a great year, too. Thanks, Mike, here's the T-shirt symbolic, the Blanchett's player of the game. You certainly are one of the more most popular players we've ever had as your football team is out here. You had two great interceptions. One, you ran back for the touchdown. They took it away from me. I thought that was unfair. Great run. How do you feel right now at this point? Uh, I just feel great. The whole team came together. We put, put it away with the game that really counted. Last year, you came through an injury. You came back this year, and you really had an outstanding, some outstanding games. We've seen you all year. Was this football team better than they showed? Yeah, they, they were a lot better. They came back uh, the second half, uh, number seven there. He, he was really running the ball hard, and, you know, we didn't take anybody out. Woodson really ran the ball hard. You had a couple real game or touchdown saving tackles. We commented all throughout. You've had a great, great year at defensive corner. Two interceptions, one at the goal line. Was this a goal that your football team had at the beginning of the year, the fact that you could play in this football game and win it? Oh, yeah. At the beginning of the year, um, we, just, we, we, we were going to be uh, state championships because, uh, you know, last year we were, we were young. But this year we came back, all, all of our seniors. We really put it together this year. You really did. And you're only 5'7". You're not that big a kid. and You're an inspiration to players who want to play football and don't think they're that big. And the fact you came back from an injury, too, is a credit. I, I want you to go and enjoy this one. Your football team really deserves it. You had a great year, and uh, this is one you're going to take for the rest of your life. And you should have had that touchdown. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Buddy Turnovitz, where are the windshield wipers? That's what I want to know. We're, it's really a light mist out here. Our final score here. Uh, at Jestal Field, the Class Double S State Championship game with Seymour 40 and the Warhawks of Bloomfield 12. And on behalf of Buddy Chernovitz and our Blanchett's player of the game, Mike Weedle, Ed Clements, goodbye everyone.